Hello, my name is Linda and I'm the brand ambassador for Needle Creations. Today I wanted to show you how to work up our yummy sushi. So this kit includes everything you need to work up these six pieces of sushi. So when you unbox our crochet kit, you're going to see here that we have six different colors of yarn and then we also have some fiber fill in our directions. I'm going to go ahead and set my fiber fill over to the side because we won't need that until we start finishing up pieces. In our yarn, we also have a tapestry needle that I'm also going to set over here to the side and we have our 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. We also have the directions. One thing I do want to point out before you begin you're going to want to read through the instructions and then you also want to make sure you're familiar with the abbreviations including any of the letter abbreviations for the yarn and then the different stitch abbreviations. The first page of the directions is going to show you how to work the stitches you need to know for this kit and then the second page will provide you with the actual instructions. So before you begin, there's just a couple of things that I want to point out. The first is, is that you see here that our kit does say it's for an intermediate level crocheter. If you need a refresher of basic stitches, there is a video on the Fabric Editions YouTube channel that goes through all of the basic stitches for our crochet kits. Additionally, I do recommend that you hold on to the box. I just keep my box and my directions off camera so that I can refer to it in case I need to take a look at the picture while I'm working up the product. Finally, we do recommend you use our crochet hook because this size crochet hook will ensure that you have enough material and yarn provided to you to work through the entirety of the kit and you don't run out of yarn. Our crochet kit provides you with the materials to work up these six different pieces of sushi. So you do have the three rolls and the three nigiri. In total, we're going to be working up 13 individual pieces and then we will assemble them into these six finished pieces of sushi. So our first step is going to be to create the inner portion of the different sushis. And so I'm going to show you this on camera using the yellow. And then you will also be creating the inner points with the pink and the green yarns as well. But we're going to do the yellow here on camera. So we're going to want to grab our yellow yarn and our crochet hook. And we're going to start with a slip knot insert the crochet hook and then chain two. Once you chain two, you are going to do six single crochets into the second chain from your hook. Okay. Now for these rounds, you are going to be joining every round. So what this means is you will be slip stitching to join. So I'm gonna find my very first stitch that I created when I started the round, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull the first loop on my hook through the second. And that will join my round. For these pieces, every round you will be slipping to join. And then before you start the next round, you're going to chain one. Now, when we start the next round, it's important to know where to put your stitches. You always start in the first stitch where you just slipped to join and then chained. So this right here is my first stitch. Where I slip to join looks like a stitch, but it's really not. So when I go back around and hit the slip stitch, I want to be careful not to work into that stitch. So I do work into the very first stitch where I slipped to join. I do not work into the slip stitch itself. This will make more sense as we go. I just want to make sure that you are clear about that so you don't get confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two single crochet in each of the six single crochets that I made. So there is single crochet one in that stitch and two. And then I'm just going to go all the way around so that I have 12 single crochets as I finish up row two. So you're putting two single crochets into each of the single crochets that you just made. So one single crochet and two. This is my technically my sixth, so I have six more. Now I'm going to stop for a minute before I do the last two. If you're looking, you looks like I have two stitches left. Again, this last stitch here is not actually a stitch. That's the slip stitch that you're not going to work into. And then you kind of have this little stitch up here to the side. That is the chain one you are also not going to work into. So I only have to do two more stitches. And 
and then this will be my 12 for row one. Once I go to complete the last one, I actually don't want to finish with the yellow yarn. I am going to switch to the white. The way I'm going to do this is I am going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop of the yellow yarn, but rather than yarning over and pulling through both, I'm going to switch to the white yarn where I will then yarn over and pull through both loops with the white yarn. This is a nice way to switch colors at the end of your round. So once you have completed that, you're going to skip the slip stitch, skip the chain one, and then you're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of round two. So this completes round two. Now I'm ready to start round three where I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to do one single crochet in the first stitch followed by two single crochets increased in the next stitch. I'm going to do this the entire way around so that when I finish, I'll be left with a total of 18 stitches. So one single crochet in the first stitch. Followed by two single crochet in the next stitch. one single crochet followed by two single crochet. So you are increasing every other stitch from the row below. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim my yellow yarn off because I don't need this long tail hanging down. And then I'm gonna work my way around with the white and then move on to round number four. So I just finished the last single crochet for round number three. The last single crochet should fall in the last yellow stitch and then you should have a white stitch in your chain one. This white stitch is the one that's not really a stitch. It's actually the slip stitch from the row below. So you're going to skip over that, skip your chain one, and then you're going to slip into the first stitch of row three. Once you complete that slip stitch, you have finished row three. Now we're ready to move on to row four. So I'm going to chain one, and now I'm going to do one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then I'm going to increase. By increase, I mean two single crochet in the third stitch. And you're gonna follow this pattern all the way around. One single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then two single crochet in the third. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete rounds four and rounds five. Now what I need to do is I need to slip to join. So you can see here, here's my join, my slip stitch join from the last row and my chain one. So I'm going to go into the first stitch of round five and make sure I go underneath both loops and then I will slip stitch to join and then I'm going to chain one. Now I'm ready for round six. So for round six, I'm going to be going all the way around working in the back loop only. And again, you do want to be careful and make sure that you do start in this very first stitch where your slip stitch is and just work your way around. I just finished the last stitch of round number six. And so I need to slip to join back at my very first stitch. Now you might be wondering, do you slip only in the back loop? And the answer is no, because if you do that, you'll actually end up with an extra line. You are going to slip your stitch under both loops and do a regular slip stitch like you've done on the other rounds. And then I'm gonna yarn over and chain one and I'm ready to start round seven. For round seven through 11, you're gonna be doing one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So here's my sushi roll, and you can see that I've elongated the sides. So now I'm ready to start the decreases on the bottom. I'm gonna start these decreases with you. So in order to start round number 12, you're gonna chain one, and then you're gonna do one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then in the fourth stitch, you're gonna single crochet two together. So. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all loop, three loops on my hook. For this yamagurumi, that is the only way that you will be decreasing. So again, one single crochet in three stitches in a row, and then for the fourth and fifth stitch in that line, you're going to single crochet two together. So I'm just going to repeat this all the way around until I get back to where I slip to join for the next round. So I have completed at this point through round 14. I'm ready to stuff. Typically I stuff my amigurumi so that they are firm but not pulling on the stitches. I'm going to do the same here. However, I'm going to stuff these a little lighter than I would typically stuff my amigurumi because 
I want this to take on more of a flat shape as opposed to a circular shape and so I don't want to put too much stuffing in. So I do want to stuff enough that it's firm but not so much that it's completely filled because I do want it to resemble the sushi roll. Once I do that I am ready now to complete the last round which is going to be round 15. So I'm going to insert my hook again. And to complete this last round, I am going to chain one, and then the entire round is going to be single crocheting two together. So when you complete round 14, you have a total of 12 stitches. So for round 15, you're gonna go around and you're gonna single crochet two together so that you are left with a total of six stitches. When you finish this, you are gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of a tail that you will use to seam the sushi roll closed with, when you finish this piece, you will make two more of them using the green yarn in the center and the pink yarn in the center. So you will have a total of three little sushi rolls that you will make. And then I will chain one and pull that through. You might have a little bit of an opening there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my yarn needle and I'll thread that in. And all I'm gonna do is just whip stitching this closed. And then when I feel like it's pretty good, all I'm gonna do is take my yarn, go through the middle. I'm not gonna come out the center because I've got the yellow there. I'm probably gonna come out just here on the side and I'll pull that end through and then I can just trim that and my roll is done. So to make the sushi bands, you're gonna use the black yarn, but for me to try to show you with the black yarn, it's gonna be really hard to see. So instead, I'm gonna show you with this blue yarn, but you will want to use black. For this band for the sushi rolls, you're gonna start with chaining nine. And then we're gonna be working double crochets back into this chain. You're gonna start by double crocheting into the third chain from your hook. And then you will put more double crochets into this chain. So you're just going to work back to the beginning of your chain. You should end with those couple chains at the end. Okay, once you have completed the first row of double crochets, now is the point that it's important that you understand what you're going to do for round two. So you're going to be working a chain three and that chain three is actually gonna count as your first double crochet. So once you chain three, you will not put a double crochet into this first stitch. You're then gonna double crochet in the next six stitches and it's going to feel like you're done, but you're actually not finished. You also need to double crochet in this little chain three here at the end. That was that initial foundation chain when you entered the first double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your work, yarn over and chain three, skip that first stitch. You do not double crochet into that first stitch because your chain three counts as a double crochet. So you double crochet into the second stitch and then I'm gonna work all the way back putting a double crochet above each of the double crochets down below. So at this point, you should have a chain three and six double crochets, but you want seven. And so now's the point where you need to work into the top of this chain here at the end. In my opinion, this first chain is the trickiest one to work into. And then after that, it's a lot easier to see where your chain is and to work into it. You're gonna wanna make sure you get into that top chain. And you're just gonna put a double crochet and then for every other row, for a total of 15 rows, you're just gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna turn my work, yarn over, chain three, and then skip the first stitch, start double crocheting in the second stitch, and make sure that I work all the way back. I should have a total of a, one chain three and seven double crochets with that last double crochet going into the chain three from the row below.
So here I am back at the chain three from the row below. So I'm just gonna yarn over and then my last double crochet will go into that chain three. Now you might see little places from the chains where you have, looks like you have a little gap. Don't worry about it. You're not doing anything wrong. Once you work this up, you really can't see that on a finished product. It's there, but it's not going to be obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my black yarn and I will finish three of these bands. I am almost at the point that I'm ready to put my sushi rolls together. In order to do this, I'm gonna fold it in half and use my longer tail just to whip stitch my band closed. So you can see I'm just staying up here at the edge of where the bands are. This is my extra string. I'm just laying it down flat so that it gets seamed in when I seam this end closed. Stitch this all the way to the end. And then I will weave my end in and I will be ready to assemble. So next I'm gonna show you how to create rice rolls. In order to do this, I'm gonna walk you through the beginning steps and then you will be creating three of these. So you're gonna start with a chain of two. And then you're gonna do six single crochet into the second chain from your hook. Now you're gonna slip to join and that will complete round one. You're gonna chain one to start round two. And the very first thing you're gonna do for round two is you're gonna increase into the first stitch by placing two single crochet. You're then gonna put one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. This is gonna increase your stitch count across these three stitches by one stitch. You're then gonna repeat that. So you're gonna increase by putting two single crochet, and then you're gonna put one single crochet into the next two stitches. As a reminder, when you approach the end of a row, it looks like you have another stitch. You don't, that's where you slip to join. So you're gonna again, slip into the first stitch of round number two and join. Round three is your last increase round. To start round three, you're gonna chain one and then you're gonna do two single crochets in each row round. Now I'm gonna complete round three and then for rows four through 11, single crochet all the way around and then we will start the decreases. All right, so I have finished round number 11. Now it's time for round 12, which is my first decrease round. So for these, you're gonna have two decrease rounds, round 12 and round 14. For round 12, you're going to start by chaining one, and then all the way around, you're gonna be single crocheting two together. This will take your total stitch number from 16 stitches down to eight stitches. So I'm just gonna work my way around single crocheting two together. Now that I have completed round number 12, I'm gonna slip to join. Now, before I go on, I'm actually gonna stuff this piece. You do not need a lot of stuffing for this and you're gonna stuff very lightly because you want it to kind of flatten out like a sushi roll and you can see that on the picture on the box. You do have two more rounds that you're going to be crocheting so while I am stuffing this, I do want to keep that in mind that I might want to add enough that I know that there's enough there when I complete these last two rounds. So there's my finished rice roll. Now I'm going to go ahead and work up two more of these. You can see I have left a tail so that I can assemble my pieces together at the end. Now it's time to crochet the striped fish topping. You're going to make two of these, one with the gold color, one with the pink color. They are made identically until you get to the end of the pink one where you're gonna add that little tail. You are gonna need your pink yarn and your white yarn so that we can create this. And you're gonna be starting with a chain two and then inserting five single crochets into the second chain from your hook. I'm gonna finish round one by slip stitching to join, and then I will begin the first increase round. I'm gonna chain one, and then I will do two single crochet into each of the single crochets from round one. So this is my first increase round. When I get back around, I'm gonna slip to join, and then I'm gonna chain one so that I can begin round three. For round three, I'm gonna do one single crochet followed by an increase, 
So one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the next. I'm gonna do this all the way around until I get to the last stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my single crochet by inserting my hook, yarning over and pulling up a loop. And then I'm actually gonna switch to the white yarn to yarn over again and pull through. To finish round number three, I'll slip to join. I'm just gonna give those ends a little tug to tighten down that stitch where I just changed the yarn. Then I'm gonna chain one and I will single crochet all the way around for two rounds. This is my first white stripe until I get to the last stitch of round number five where I will change back to the pink yarn and then follow my pattern to create the stripes. And you're gonna do the striping from rounds four through nine. I have finished now through round number nine. So when I'm ready to start round number 10, I am going to chain one and then I will do one single crochet in the next stitch and then I will do a decreased stitch by single crocheting two together. So the first stitch is going to be just one single crochet and then I will single crochet two together. And I'm gonna repeat this for the entirety of the round and then I will complete round number 11 where I'm just gonna single crochet in each stitch from round 10 now that I have finished round number 11, I'm ready to complete round 12. I'm going to start by chaining one and then I am going to single crochet two together for the entire round. And that will complete the body of my striped fish topping. If you are doing the gold topping, you will stop after round 12. If you're doing the pink topping, you're going to do one more round so that you can create that little tail. What I'm gonna do is I am going to chain three and then I'm gonna do one double crochet back into that stitch. After I complete that in the first stitch, I'm gonna put two double crochet in each of the remaining four stitches. This is going to give me that tail that you see on the pink striped fish on the picture on the box. For the flat topping, you're just gonna do a panel of single crochets. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot and then I'm gonna chain 15. And then I'm gonna single crochet starting with the second chain from my hook. So I will have 14 single crochet per line. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way back to the beginning doing single crochets. Once you complete round one, you're going to turn, chain one. That chain does not count as a stitch. And then you will do one single crochet in each single crochet back. And you're going to repeat this for a total of four more rows. So you have a total of six rows worked up of single crochet. For one of your little nigiri, you are gonna create what we call a holding band. And this is also going to be done with the black yarn, just like the bands for the sushi rolls were. Again, because it is hard to see a tutorial with the black yarn, I'm gonna use my blue and show you how you're gonna work up that holding band. So to work up that holding band, you're actually gonna start by chaining 18. So here's my chain of 18, and then I'm gonna go back, making sure I don't twist my chain, and find the very first loop that I created, and I'm gonna slip it onto my crochet hook, and then slip stitch these two sides together to make a ring. Once I've made my ring, and I wanna make sure that it doesn't get twisted, I am going to chain one, and then I'm gonna start single crocheting into each of the chains. And I'm gonna do this all the way around to make this band. And then when I get to the end, I'll fasten it off. I'm gonna go ahead and work this up as well off camera using the black yarn and you should do the same. And my holding band will be completed. So I finished my band and just flipped it the other way around and now I'm ready to assemble my sushi rolls. And all I'm gonna do is take my little filling and place the band around the outside. You might have to adjust the roll just a little bit in the band to make it look realistic. You can see there's one, two, 
and three. And now the first couple pieces of my sushi are finished. To sew your fish to your rice ball, you're gonna need the rice ball and your fish. I'm gonna choose to put my joint of the rice ball down to the bottom, and then I'm just gonna seam my fish here on top. I'll be putting the side with the string down towards the bottom to make it easier while I'm seaming. So insert my needle onto the rice ball and onto the fish topping, go through one or two stitches, and then I'll just whip stitch along in a row and I'm just gonna work my way up the striped fish topping and up the rice ball till I get to the other end. I'll probably knot it, knot my yarn once. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish attaching this and then we'll be done with this piece. So next up it's time to assemble my little sushi that has the flat topping. For this you'll need one of the rice rolls that you created, the flat topping and then holding band. You can see I have not woven this end in yet. So what I'm gonna actually do is take my yarn and I am just gonna take this excess end and I will weave it through the center of my rice roll. You're gonna just pick one of the stitches on the other side to come out of. And I'll give this just a little bit of tension so that when I trim this, that end will go back up inside the rice roll. And now I'm ready to assemble my pieces. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the little flat topping on top, and then I'm gonna very gently put this little band around and position it where I like it. And there's your next piece of sushi. So here is our finished sushi. It is so adorable. I love the colors, it's so bright. I can definitely see why these are named yummy. Super, super cute. So we have our three rolls and our three nigiri. And I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you find that you still have questions, definitely email us at help at askacrafter.com and we'll be able to assist you with any questions you have working up the sushi kit. I hope that you have as good a time working this kit up as what I did. Thank you so much for watching.